Are you in the market for the new M3 Max MacBook Pro but can't decide whether the 14 inch is the right size laptop for you? Or maybe you're thinking the bigger display on the 16 inch will suit you better. Well, hopefully this video helps you decide whether you should go all in on the 16 inch M3 Max or the 14 inch M3 Max. Now we do have both laptops and I have the M3 Max 16 core CPU with 40 core GPUs, uh, 64 gigs of RAM, and the 14 inch actually has a two terabyte drive while the 16 inch that I have right here has a bigger four terabyte drive. Uh, but just to give you guys a quick speed test on both of these machines, just so you guys know that, you know, whether going for a bigger drive gives you, you know, better performance. And while it's roughly about the same, so, Difference between the two terabyte and four terabyte option, not much performance gains there if you go for a bigger drive. But just know that these SSDs are extremely fast, but also very pricey. Now, this is actually my first time using the all new M3 Max MacBook Pros, and I actually have a personal M3 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro that I made a video on not too long ago, and I'll leave that link down below that like button if you guys do wanna watch that video. Uh, but before we compare both M3 Max machines, let's quickly compare the 16 inch M3 Pro to the 16 inch M3 Max in case you guys are curious on performance and battery. Uh, the M3 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro got a single core score of 3,180 and a multi core score of 15,380. Now the M3 Max got a single core score of 3,200, which is pretty much on par with the M3 Pro. But when it comes to multi-core, the M3 Max scored a hefty 21,048, which is about a 40% increase in performance. But when it comes to battery life though, the M3 Pro is a little bit more efficient for everyday tasks and can get you roughly about 15% more battery life compared to the M3 Max variant. But going back to the 14 inch and 16 inch M3 Max, let's compare both and figure out what does what better and what the differences are. So let's talk about the display first. Uh, in my opinion, the 14 inch MacBook Pro is a good middle ground where it's not too small, but also not too big either. It has pretty slim bezels all around. Plus you get that liquid Retina XDR display that has a standard brightness at 600 nits that can get up to 1600 nits peak brightness. The 16 inch display on the other hand is the same as the 14 inch in terms of display tech. And it's just straight up beautiful. The bigger display is definitely much appreciated and after using the 14 inch for a couple of weeks and then going to the 16 inch, you kind of get this uh, wow factor. It's not the fact that you can have, you know, more smaller windows up on your screen. It's just that you can fit the same amount of windows uh, as the 14 inch display, but things are just more legible. And it's just a lot easier to see everything, especially when I'm editing videos in Final Cut or, you know, when I'm making thumbnails in Photoshop. Moving on to the speakers, and I'll play some samples in a bit. I've always said that MacBook speakers are the gold standard when it comes to laptop speakers, and these two just don't disappoint. While the 14 inch sounds great, take a listen. But the 16 inch just sounds more full and a lot louder in my opinion, so take a listen. Now you may not be able to tell from this video, but in person the 16 inch is more full, it gets louder, and has this uh, thump feeling when bass heavy songs are playing. Now when it comes to performance and battery, I'll be honest, when it comes to you know synthetic benchmarks, they score roughly about the same. So in Geekbench 6, like we said earlier, the 16 inch MacBook Pro scored uh, 3,234 for its single core score and 21,048 for its multi-core score. And when it comes to its metal score, the 16 inch MacBook Pro got 155,769. The 14 inch MacBook Pro scored about the same as the 16 inch and got 3,221 for its single core and 22,055 for its multi-core score. And when it comes to its GPU, the 14 inch M3 Max MacBook Pro got a metal score of 155,483. Again, the difference here isn't massive because you know they're pretty much the same machine. Now, when it comes to Cinebench, which uses both the CPU and GPU to render real world 3D rendering tasks, I noticed that the fans on the 14 inch uh, kicked up a lot sooner and is working a lot harder to cool the M3 Max chip. While the 16 inch took a few minutes for the fans to kick in, but they're also not as loud as the 14 inch. 
But in terms of the scores, the 14 inch M3 Max got a GPU score of 12,901 and a multi-core score of 1,601 points and 141 points for its single core. The 16 inch M3 Max on the other hand was able to get a slightly higher GPU score of 13,296 points a multi-core score of 1,693 points and 145 points for its single core. Again, just like Geekbench Performance, it's relatively similar between these two machines uh, with about two to 3% difference between these two machines, but not anything that you'd really notice on a daily basis. And when it comes to gaming, I actually downloaded the new Resident Evil 4 for Mac OS here on both machines and did not notice a difference in performance. For the M3 Max, the recommended settings for Resident Evil 4 uh, is to toggle prioritize graphics preset, uh, set metal effects upscaling to quality, and the resolution somewhere around 2992 by 1870. Now this will get you constant 60 frames per second, which is really cool to see on a Mac. And I can go way deeper into Mac gaming on a separate video if you guys want. But as a gamer myself, I can't wait till more developers port over their AAA games on the Mac. So, you know, I only have to carry my laptop and a controller whenever I have to travel. So, you know, I can leave my handhelds at home. But yeah, Resident Evil 4, as good as it looked, worked really well. And like I said, I'm hoping we see more modern games get ported to the Mac because That'll be a total game changer in my opinion. Now, I also threw a 10 minute 4K project in Final Cut Pro on these two laptops with the same timeline, plugins, and color grading on every clip, and both actually rendered the timeline about the same time in about three minutes and 25 seconds, and exported the video at seven minutes and 12 seconds for a 10 minute and 43 second video in H.264 and 4K. So for a video creator like myself, I didn't really notice any improvements on the bigger machine. And then when it comes to its battery, this is where the 16 inch actually shines the most. The bigger battery is much, much more noticeable here where the 16 inch can last nearly about an hour and a half, maybe two hours in the 14 inch. And if you're doing a ton of video editing, having you know multiple apps open at once and the CPU and the GPU is working a ton, you can easily drain the battery in a matter of hours. Like, three and a half to four hours on the 16 inch MacBook Pro and about two hours on the 14 inch. But if you're just using these laptops for, you know, light video editing, you're browsing the web or you're working on you know, Word documents or just watching videos, the battery life is actually pretty incredible and can easily last more than 10 hours on a single charge on the 14 inch and about 14 hours on the 16 inch, at least from my experience. So you're probably thinking to yourself, the 16 inch is actually a much better buy here and it's, worth that $300? Well, it really depends on what you prioritize and here's what I think you should consider when deciding what size to pick up. If you're the type of person who's always commuting, you're always traveling with your laptops, you're, you know, you're always on the go, you're gonna notice the weight and size of that 16 inch MacBook Pro. While the display size and the speakers are amazing, it's gonna be a pain in the butt to travel with that 16 inch MacBook Pro. Trust me, I've taken over 37 flights in 2023 and flown over 80,000 miles. And the difference between the 16 inch MacBook Pro and the 14 inch is a night and day difference and your back will thank you. The 16 inch MacBook Pro is technically portable, but it's more of a desktop replacement in my opinion. But I will say that extra screen real estate goes a long way, especially if you rarely connect to an external monitor. And after using the 14 inch for a few weeks and then using the 16 inch after that, I was like, dang, this bigger screen is really nice. But then I carried it around the house. I took it to a coffee shop and man, yeah, that weight can be a little bit much for some people. So at the end of the day, which one should you go with? Now, I personally love the size of the 16 inch display, but since both machines actually perform about the same, I'll take the loss in battery life and you know display size and speaker quality in exchange for that slimmer profile and much lighter machine overall. As much as I enjoy you know, and appreciate the bigger display and that longer battery life on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, I travel way too much to really appreciate the best of the best from Apple. But if you don't really you know, travel or commute all that much or care that a laptop is heavy, then by all means, go for the 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's a great desktop replacement that can perform just as fast, if not faster than you know, other super high-end custom built PCs and high-end Windows laptops. But if you travel a ton like me and you want that power, go for the 14 inch MacBook Pro, you won't be disappointed.